Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives to welcome you here today. The department is delighted to have you with us to receive on behalf of eligible fisher folk island-wide a one-time grant of $500 to support fisher folk amid the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you all for coming. And although we are having a bit of a late start, I think this is a very important ceremony to engage in. On behalf of the ministry, I also express deep appreciation and gratitude to the leadership of Fisher Folk Cooperatives island-wide for agreeing to facilitate the payment of the grant to both members and non-members of the Fisher Folk Cooperative Societies. The global outbreak of the COVID-19 has created unprecedented challenges for leaders at all levels in industries across the world. Your willingness to support the sector with this initiative is a true reminder of the old adage, crisis does not build character, it reveals it. COVID-19, which was confirmed to have reached St. Lucia on March 13, 2020, is a significant threat to the livelihoods of all agricultural workers, including fisher folk, as well as to food security. The initial safety measures put in place to stem the spread of COVID-19, such as curfews, travel restrictions within country, and remember the infamous 759758, closed air and sea borders and states of emergency impacted the supply chain in various ways, including transportation and distribution logistics, demand and in increased demand and reliable markets for fish by restaurants, hotels, wholesalers, processors, etc. Reduced access to fish and exacerbated the issues of inadequate storage options and concerns about price of fish. The economic and social disruptions caused by the pandem pandemic is devastating, putting many people at risk. The lockdown left many unable to earn an income. For workers in the informal economy, the impacts can be felt almost immediately. The loss of income means, means that food security and overall well-being of the breadwinner and their family are under threat. A rapid assessment conducted by the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism suggests that most of the fisher folk who responded to their survey conducted in May indicated that they could only manage one month before facing significant economic challenges. Recognizing that crew members may be most at risk. The ministry revised the initial support initiative to provide more equitable program that would benefit the boat owner and crew members. The department worked to ensure the process of selection was transparent and accountable. We determined eligibility using two primary criteria in keeping with the legal requirements outlined in the Fisheries Act. One, registered as a fisher with the Department of Fisheries and captured on the 2019-2020 and 2020-2021 fishing license application as a boat owner or captain and crew associated with the vessel. The department recognizes that the grant will not on its own address the challenges being faced by the sector, nor the root cause of the economic impacts of COVID-19. As such, it is critical that we continue to encourage, empower, and enable our fishing community to protect themselves and others using every tool at their disposal to sustain their livelihoods. I take the opportunity to wish all, everyone here, the best for you and your family's health and safety during these difficult times. I am very pleased to be here this morning to receive this income support on behalf of St. Lucia Fisher Folk and my um, primary society. I am pleased because, you know, the sector has been, you know, it has taken a hit back in, um, well, earlier this year when, you know, Fisher Folk couldn't have gone out for a whole week. And I, 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 I say a week because 
future, um, when you're not working for a week, that means that there's no income. And I've been hearing people say it's only a week, but like civil servants and anybody else, when they, their pay is not in their bank account a day late or two days late, they start to speak out. And I'm not saying this because I'm a, I'm a self-employed person. And, you know, when my income is, is being stifled, I feel the pain. I just want to say um, thank you to um, the permanent secretary for reaching out to me about two months ago. And we strive on consultation. But he, you know, saw the need to consult me when the, the stimulus package, well, what, what they actually decided on, the $900, well, it was more or less a, a voucher to the boat owners. When they revised it and, and they said that, you know, we wouldn't have met the, you know, we wouldn't have reached out to the, the crew. And, you know, given each fisher $500, well, each registered fisher that is, $500, it would have made a, a greater impact. And I want to, you know, say thank you, Mr. Permanent Secretary, for that. Um, lately, we have seen with the efficient sector that, or fisher folk, that um, consultation is the key. And I stand here and I, I should think that every, any, every one of you knew or know what happened a couple of weeks ago where there was no consultation between the sector and the relevant authorities as to what happened and what it actually brought out of this. You know, the general public was, and future folk were, you know, very much disgruntled as to what really transpired. And I employ the relevant authorities to engage future folk because future folk is the governing body for all fish, um, um, fishing, um, fishing, um, sorry, the, prim the, the, the private, um, so <laughs> Future Folk is the governing body for all um, the primary societies. So when you consult the Future Folk, when you engage Future Folk, we are better able to, to make decisions more applicable to the, um, the fishing um, industry. So I want to say um, thank you um, for inviting me here, and I'm very much pleased. Thank you. Let me bring um, warm greetings on behalf of the Honorable Minister Ezekiel Joseph, the Minister responsible for fisheries. Regrettably, he would not be here today, but of course he extends his sincerest and warmest regards. Today, we are pleased as a Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives to be part of the rollout and to deliver on our income, our COVID response plan and adjusted what was input support to now income support to the fishers. So initially the idea was to provide $900 worth of fuel to both our vessel owners. And since having consultations with the various cooperatives, we found it to be more equitable to provide that support to eligible fishers, boat owners and crew. So we see that it would have impacted a larger number of persons and created a greater impact. So that is why we did it. COVID, novel co coronavirus, new. We have to change our behavior. We have to change our lifestyles. And we have to learn to adapt and live with the pandemic. What we have sought to do is to create that environment for fishers. So from the onset, Mr. Stevens spoke, spoke about not going to, to sea for a week. But the Department of Agriculture was open always to provide the access to the sea so that fishers could go out. We had to liaise with the police, the marine unit, and of course the, the protocols, put protocols for the lighthouse to enable fishers to move from their homes to the sea and back during the virus to ensure that we receive the vital protein and the food and nutrition that we require. At that time also there was a concern about the country shutting down, country was shut down and availability of food and fresh protein and fish. So against that backdrop, you have to ensure that the country and the people are nourished and they are healthy in the face of a, a pandemic. So that was, was one reason. And of course, ensuring the livelihoods and income. And fishers, even though you heard about the 758, 759, and in some cases, 760, access was provided to fishers, even though in a localized context, for them to move around and ply their trade. So that was the environment created by the Department of Agriculture. We have also recently witnessed the handing over of about 200 VHF radios. Safety is of paramount concern to us at the department to ensure that the fishers go out 
and they come in safely. So that is another, another milestone that we achieved most recently to ensure that our sons and daughters who go out to fish, there is, there is some degree of assurance or some mechanism to assist them when they enter deep water. So too you would have heard that the department in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister, we are exploring the installation of vessel monitoring systems on boats. And that is for a dedicated reason. We want to ensure that, of course, it has an emergency function, that you can track the vessels, and to ensure that we have a, a continuous record of the routes that the vessels ply, so that we know where they are, and we know how to assist if, if in case we can or need to assist. So these are some of the initiatives being undertaken by the government of St. Lucia to ensure the safety of fishers. However, we heard of market access, a decline in income, restriction on markets, the quantities that we were able to sell pre-COVID and other quantities we can sell now, and we need. So fishers, there's a law to enter into other activities to bring in quick sources of income. And we as representatives I need to warn our members against such practices, members and non-members of the cooperatives. And I'm pleased that the cooperatives have, through the payment system, encouraged non-members, to me it's a, a way of encouraging non-members to participate in the cooperative and strengthen the communication between all fishers. But we need to ensure that the persons who go out to sea, that they engage in legitimate activities. And I'm saying this because it is risky for maybe a few dollars more. You are at risk of losing your life, you are at risk of losing your vessel. You are, even if you have, you have not, there's a, a contact tracing. You could be quarantined for two weeks and you still lose two weeks income. There, so there are, there are a lot of demerits when you go out there and engage in such activity. So the law is there, quick money, but in the end, is it really worth it? So we need to, we need to tell our members and express to them the concerns about, about engaging in other activities that are non-fishing activities. The, the COVID support provided to fishers we had to engage in a lot of discussion, collaboration, and negotiation with the Department of Finance. If you look within our 2020, 2020 to 2021 budget, the funds dedicated to our COVID plan has not been released. So we had to approach them to get a special provision for fishers to enable that kind of support to come through. It took a long time, but we're here now, and I'm pleased that it has come through for the fishers. So, we are still working to provide relief to all other agricultural stakeholders, everybody. We have seen support for other farmers in other areas and we see support now for fishers. So that is our commitment to you, to ensure your safety, to ensure your livelihoods, albeit in a, a scaled down environment as the economy, we try to keep the economy open and we try to reopen all sectors and, and resume some degree of normalcy in operations. So I would like to thank the Prime Minister, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, the peers of finance who made this, this release of funds possible, the Accountant General for facilitating the quick processing of the checks and the finances for us to be here today. And of course, the staff of the Department of Fisheries. Of the, and of course, most of all, the fishers who have been so very patient, so very patient um, for what has been forthcoming for a long time. So, the Department of Fisheries, we continue to seek your support. We assure you of our commitment to partner, collaborate, and of course, the word consultation, to consult, to consult with you, and it is a, an engagement that we have to journey on together. We, united, we can do it. If we do it individually, there will, no, there will not be any success. So I thank you all for your patience. I thank you for your support. May God bless and keep you safe.